welcome dear viewers to the video on granulation process interview questions so in this video we are going to see some of the commonly asked question on granulation process so first is how to how to select the granulation process or how the granulation process is selected for the formulations like tablets and capsules so the granulation process is selected based on the drug properties whether the drug is soluble insoluble or how the drug is getting degraded that information can be taken from the force degradation data then drug load in the formulation whether the drug percent in the formulation is low medium or high based on that the granulation process is selected then the properties of the drug like solubility solid state form and the flow properties and particle size then density is also considered while selecting the granulation process granulation is also selected based on to the reference product composition and characterization of the reference formulation if you are making a generic product and if you are making a equivalent product to the reference formulation then formulation quality characteristics which are required based on that granulation process is selected then it is also selected based on to the development process trials and stability batches data why granulation is done the answer is to mix the api and excipients to improve the density and flow to impart the manufacturability and improve processability to get the blend uniformity and contain uniformity and to improve the solubility and bioavailability of the api if the it is if the api bioavailability and solubility is required to be improved or if it is affected by the granulation process what are the granulation types mainly dry granulation and wet granulation are the types and dry granulation are divided into slugging and deslugging process and roller compaction process also some of the time direct compression or dry mixing process is also known as or called as or referred as dry granulation process then wet granulation process is there which may be aqueous or non aqueous and which may be done by using the rapid mixer granulator fluid bed processor by tospray technology or planetary mixer newer techniques for granulation are also available like steam granulation melt granulation twin screw granulation so these are some of the newer technologies then what is granulation so what is the exact meaning of granulation if someone ask you this question then it can be answered as it means mixing particle size enlargement and densification process in which the small particles of raw materials are mixed together and converted into larger granules it can be done with or without solvent and binders so it is not necessary that you are required to use the binders or solvents by using the roller compactor you can do the dry granulation and have the granules factors affecting wet granulation using rmg so binder level and binder type binder viscosity binder addition time total granulation time impeller and chopper speed are the factors which affect the wet granulation using rmg also the fluid uptake of the wet granulation using rmg affect the granule properties factors affecting dry granulation using roller compaction so dry binder level if it is used and its type roller compaction force or roll pressure roller gap and speed then number of cycles and the granules to fine ratio has a great impact on to the roller compaction or dry granulation process also the mill speed and mill screen affects the granules to fine ratio and thus have impact on to dry granulation process factors affecting wet granulation using toss spray so dry also here dry binder level or binder if it is dissolved in the solvent its level and its type affect the wet granulation using top spray then the spray rate and fluidization then temperature of the fluid bed processor during spraying and during drying fluidization during spraying and drying and the total spray time and the final drying time has impact on the 
टॉप स्प्रे ग्रेनुलेशन टेक्नोलॉजी और द टॉप स्प्रे प्रोसेस हाउ द एर एम जी ग्रेनुलेशन एंड पॉइंट इज डिटरमाइंड सो मेनी ऑफ द प्रोफेशनल आर नोन टू द टर्मिनोलॉजी लाइक स्नोबॉल टेस्ट इज देयर बनाना ब्रेकिंग टेस्ट इज देयर देन बाय साइंटिफिक वे यू कैन से दैट टॉर्क एंड एम्पीर इज रीडिंग ऑफ द इम्पेलर एंड चॉपर इफ इट इज यूज आर द टेक्निक्स हुई कैन बी यूज टू डिटरमाइन द एंड पॉइंट एंड एंड पॉइंट इज फिक्सड बेस्ड ऑन टू द डेवलपमेंट ट्रायल्स स्केलअप एंड एक्सिबिट ट्रायल्स विज्युअल ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ यूनिफॉर्म मिक्सिंग यूनिफॉर्म वेटिंग फ्लो ऑफ द वेट ग्रेन्यूल्स समटाइम्स एंड कंसिस्टेंसी आर सम ऑफ द विज्युअल ऑब्जर्वेशन विच आर यूज टू नो द एंड पॉइंट देन वॉट आर द कॉमन ग्रेन्युलेटिंग सॉल्वेंट्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल प्यूरिफाइड वॉटर इज देयर देन ऑर्गेनिक सॉल्वेंट्स लाइक आइसोप्रोपाइल एल्कोहल एसिडोन मिथेनॉल मिथिलीन डाइक्लोराइड दीज आर द सॉल्वेंट्स hydroalkylic solvents are also used which are made with water and organic solvent mixture in specific ratio what are the advantages of aqueous granulation as water is with low cost and safe to use so low cost and safety for use are the advantages of aqueous granulation then what are the disadvantages of aqueous granulation aqueous granulation is not suitable suitable for the drugs which are sensitive to hydrolysis or the drugs which get degraded in presence of water so for those drugs and those formulations aqueous granulation using water cannot be done then it takes longer drying time and drying is required to be performed at higher temperature so that water can be removed after granulation is completed then it cannot dissolve some drugs if required in the process sometimes the drugs are dissolved in uh, the granulating solvent and then that solution is used for granulation so if drug is insoluble in the water then aqueous granulation cannot be done what are the advantages of non aqueous granulation so the non aqueous solvents or organic solvents can dissolve the hydrophobic drugs if it is required to be dissolved in the granulation process suitable for drugs which are sensitive to hydrolysis generally if the drugs are sensitive to hydrolysis due to water that time directly dry granulation can be done but if still dry granulation is not possible and wet granulation is not possible using water that time wet granulation using non aqueous solvents can be done then the granules made with non aqueous granulation can be dried by shorter drying time or at a shorter drying time and drying at a lower temperature so thermolabile drugs can also be saved from degradation what are the disadvantages of non aqueous granulation first is the cost of solvents safety of the operators and scientist working for the granulation process or in the granulation process then the testing of residual solvents is required if you are using the residual solvents in the granulation process name commonly used binders so many of the binders are used i have enlisted here some of the commonly used binders like povidone polyvinyl alcohol uh, poly uh, pyrrolidones are there then pvpk30 is a well known binder then copovidone hypromellose that is hpmc hpc pg starch that is pre gelatinized starch then gelatin sodium carboxymethyl cellulose that is sodium cmc polyethylene glycol is also used sometimes so these are some of the commonly used binders these are the polymers and these have the viscosity and these can bind the uh, powder particles together that's why these are used as binder how binder and binder level is selected so it is based on to the required granule properties like flow density particle size distribution required compressibility requirements and disintegration and dissolution requirements so these are fixed on to the basis of research and development and stability trials what happens if binder and binder level is not proper so 
if binder is too low or too high then it will affect the granule properties and the tablet properties what happens if binder is too high then it will give hard granules high disintegration time and slow dissolution will be there the general range for binder level is to 3 to 5 percent but in some of the formulations the binders can be used from 2 to 8 percent around the general range is 3 to 5 percent how binder is added binder can be added in the dry mix part or the binder can be dissolved in granulating solvent and then added to the dry mix what are the granulation defects so many granulation defects are there but generally too dry or wet granules are the granulation defects that means the loss on drying may be too low or high so if drying is not proper then it may give low or high LOD then hard granules and fine granules so if the granulation process is not proper it may give to hard granules or fine granules then granules to fines ratio may be affected generally 40 percent granules should be there and 60 percent fines should be there what are the granules to fines ratios so the granules to fines ratios uh, generally it is considered that the material or granules which are retained on 60 mesh are called as granules while the material which is passing through the 60 mesh is called as fines so it is the quantity of granules retained on 60 mesh to the quantity of fine passed to the 60 mesh in general and it affects the granule properties like flow density and weight variation in the capsule filling and tablet compression what are the process stages after granulation generally granulation is followed by blending and lubrication and then lubricated blend can be compressed into tablet or can be filled into the capsules so this this is regarding the common question for granulation process granulation process is a vast topic many question can be there so i have enlisted some of the questions for your easy understanding and ready reference you can comment on to the questions for granulation and i will try to answer those questions in the upcoming videos thank you for watching the video kindly do like share and subscribe to pharma learning in depth channel thank you